7 o'clock, it's time to begin the May meeting of the Williams County Board of County Commissioners. We'll call it to order. At this time, uh, I'd like to ask you please to stand for the pledge to the flag. Uh, we'll have our invocation. Brother Mr. Tom Bain will lead us in our pledge to the flag this evening. Pledge to the flag, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'd remain standing for our invocation tonight. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for life itself and for the opportunities that you've given us to be a part of this county, this state, and this nation. We pray, Father, that you would bless the families in our community that are continuing to remember their lost and fallen officers who were honored this past week with a reinstitution of the memorial for our Sheriff M.H. Stevens, Constable Sam Locke, Matt Sullivan, Constable Reed, and also our Deputy Sheriff Morris Heathcock. Father, we pay particular attention to our fallen officers as we know this week in our great capital there will be thousands and thousands of officers together across this country to honor the 133 men and women that lost their lives in 2008 while serving in the line of duty as officers, firemen, first responders. We pray, Father, that you'd continue to be and bless those families. Bless us tonight as we conduct county business. Watch over us and help us that we will always do the right thing. Father, pick us up when we fall down and do wrong and keep us safe. Watch over our country. Father, we pray a special blessing tonight for our soldiers that lost their life just today were brutally murdered on the fields of battle by one of our own soldiers. Bless us all. Help us to realize that we're blessed to be Americans and help us always stand up to salute our flag and have it as a focal point of our dedication to this great United States of America. Bless us and forgive us is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Ms. Elaine, if you would please uh, call the roll if you're present, press your, I guess your white button to record uh, your being here present tonight. Uh, Mr. Green, you're here, I know, I see you. I have 21 present, three absent. Commissioner Davis absent, Commissioner Ms. Mills, Commissioner Ernie Williams. Okay, I've heard from Commissioner Davis. He's out of town on company business. Will not be here. Uh, anybody heard from Commissioner Mills or Commissioner Williams? So we'll operate. We do have a quorum present, and uh, certainly appreciate. Okay, Commissioner Mills is sick, so we will miss her tonight uh, here, and we thank each of you for being here for our meeting. Approval of minutes of the regular March the 9th, 2009. County Commission meeting. Minutes and copies were mailed out to each of you. I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Commissioner Wilson, the motion. Commissioner Tommy Little, the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Short unanimous. <laughs> Introduction and acceptance of Highway Commission minutes. These were sent out to you in the mail. I'll entertain a motion to accept. 
Commissioner Cook, Commissioner Green, the second. All in favor of accepting the Highway Committee minutes, Highway Commission minutes, say aye. aye. Opposed? Show that unanimous as well. Citizens communication, anybody signed up to speak? First that has signed up is uh, Gail Moria Harris. Uh, Ms. Gail, if you'd come to the microphone and for the record and for those watching you at home tonight, tell us who you are and uh, we'll entertain your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Naren. Uh, I am Gail Moyer Harris, and I'm here tonight uh, just to take a few moments of your time and tell you that this is National Drug Court Month. Um, throughout our country and really throughout the world, drug courts are being recognized for the lives that they are saving and the families that are being reunited and the productive citizens that are being returned to uh, communities across the nation. Uh, in light of that, we have also given you tonight an invitation from the four circuit court judges, Judge Tim Easter, uh, Judge Jeff Bivens, Judge Robbie Bill, and Judge Jim Martin, inviting each of you to attend uh, the drug court graduation, which will be uh, at the Williamson County Judicial Center. It'll be Thursday evening, May 21st. It's an excellent opportunity for you to be able to understand the work of drug court and to hear the stories of people that have successfully completed uh, the drug court program and have returned to our community uh, with restored lives. So with that, I just want to extend that invitation from the judges and hope that you'll be able to share in the National Drug Court Month by being uh, our guest at the drug court graduation. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, ma'am. Janine Moore. Good evening, Chairman and County Commissioners. My name is Janine Moore, and I am the school board representative for the 3rd District here in Williamson County. And I'm here representing the constituents of the 3rd District. I know you have a vote tonight about funding another elementary school in Spring Hill area. And um, I'm not gonna give you a lot of facts and figures about it because Dr. David Heath is here and he's going to be doing that. Um, I understand you may also have heard from some of our constituents um, telling you why a school's important to them and the community down there. Um, but I just wanna remind you a really important figure that we'll be talking about later is by the year 2010, 2011 school year, we will have 658 students over capacity in our three elementary buildings in Spring Hill area, which is a whole nother school worth of kids. And um, right now we're dealing with a problem with portables. So I really want you to listen to the presentation and to continue to support the schools the way you have because we do have great schools here. Thank you. Thank you. point on the agenda I'd, I'd like to uh, address a couple of things uh, have a late file resolution Do we have a number we have two late files okay we have two late file resolutions resolution 50 926 resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into a tower licensing agreement with Comtech for installation of equipment on a county owned tower. Uh, that resolution was filed late today at 9:50 a.m. this morning. So is there any objection from anyone as it relates to this late file resolution? See no objections, so we will add that at the end of the agenda. And then you have late file resolution 509-27 that was filed uh, at 6.35 p.m. this evening. A resolution declaring certain equipment as surplus property and authorizing the sale of the equipment. Uh, any objection to hearing 509-27 at the close, the last resolution this evening? I see no objection. We certainly 
thank you for that update and uh, that information. We'd also like to recognize the fact that uh, our Sergeant at Arms tonight is uh, Mr. Lynn Sutton. We also have Sheriff Jeff Long here with us. I'd like to ask you as you move forward into the meeting, if you do have a telephone or a pager, please turn it off because if it goes off, uh, our Sergeant of Arms will allow you to watch the meeting from the parking lot. So please help us. This is the legislative session of the Williams County Governing Body and we respect the fact that we're here to carry out very serious business and we would ask you as you're in our chamber to do the same thing. So thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We also have these announcements that all of you should mark and put it on your calendar. That's our Memorial Day service that will begin on Monday, May the 25th, 10 o'clock at the Veterans Memorial Park at Five Points. We'll have uh, several participants this year from Color Guards and U.S. Armed Forces and Honor Guard from D Company and several others participating. Of special interest this year is the fact that we're installing a memorial paver in honor of Williamson County native George Jordan who was awarded the Medal of Honor on May the 7th 1890 so make sure that uh, you can make your plans to be there there'll be seating provided we'll be providing bottled water because it's probably going to be warm like it usually is so make sure that you put that on your calendar probably most of you or some of you may have a holiday that day Monday May 25th please come and join us because it's very impressive to have a good turnout and a representation from our Board of County Commissioners uh, at that meeting. Pardon me. The only other thing that I've got before we move forward is, is I would like your permission. Look, look at your agenda under appropriations. We'll be talking about 5091 resolution transferring the sale of property uh, back to the county. Resolution number 20, if you would just take it and move it forward if there's no objection. And we need to hear that right after we do 5091 because we're accepting this property back into the county general, but we're also putting the money and defeasing the money, as I understand, yes. that where it needs to go back to the notes that. Uh, that was sold under, and we'll talk more about that when we get to it. All right, uh, that's all the information from the chair, and uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we'll go through our reports in just a minute. Uh, move on to communications and messages from uh, County Mayor Rogers Anderson. Mr. Chairman, it's not often we get to recognize and appreciate a gentleman who has put in over 30 years worth of service. And so if I could at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Ed Jaggers to come forward with him, him and his immediate family. If they would like to join him, I certainly would. And then behind me is Lee Sanders. I'm going to get Lee to come up here and actually do the reading of this proclamation. He doesn't know he's going to do that. I didn't want to make him nervous ahead of time. <laughs> give, give him plenty of notice. Yeah. He's a, he's a Williamson County graduate. So uh, uh, I do want to say before the proclamation is af actually, uh, actually written, um, written, read into the records. I'll get it out here in a minute. Um, very often times we don't always give the recognition to the men and women that serve in these different boards that we have. And uh, I know how much that means to each of you. And this particular board he served on, the Board of Zoning and Peels, is not the easiest one to serve on. Uh, in fact, it's the last line of defense uh, quite oftentimes for us before we go to court. So if you would allow Lee to take this and read it into the records, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Jaggers may want to say a few words too, Houston. Mr. Lee. Mr. Chairman, it's a proclamation of appreciation 
whereas Ed Eggers has been a resident of Williamson County since 1974, and whereas in 1979, County Judge Wilburn Kelly appointed Ed Jaggers to a seat on the Williamson County Board of Zoning Appeals, the board, and Ed Jaggers was subsequently reappointed to this seat by County Executive Robert Ring, County Executive Clint Callicott, and County Mayor Rogers Anderson. And whereas during his tenure on the Williamson County Board of Zoning Appeals, the population of Williamson County has increased by an estimated 220%. And whereas, during the past 30 years, Mr. Jaggers has deliberated and voted on many difficult decisions brought before the board, and whereas, throughout his tenure, Mr. Jaggers has consistently demonstrated the qualities of dedication, integrity, and common sense in his deliberations on behalf of Williamson County and the Board of Zoning Appeals. And whereas, Mr. Jaggers has recently relocated to Easley, South Carolina, and will therefore be unable to continue to serve on the Williamson County Board of Zoning Appeals. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Williamson County Board of Commissioners, meeting in the regular session this 11th day of May, 2009, that we hereby show our appreciation to Mr. Ed Jaggers for his 30 years of dedicated service to Williamson County. In witness of, I have a, a, a test <clears throat> hereunto set my hand and fix the seal, Roger C. Anderson, County Mayor. Congratulations, Ed. Thank you. It has been a 30 years of interesting decisions and effects. I had some reservations about uh, leaving such a, a good place, but uh, I found someone to help me, and uh, it's uh, sitting on that board, there's a lot of things that, you know, that comes for you that you wish you could do something different, but you can't because the way it's written, but uh, we, we try to do our best and do the job that y'all have given to us to do, and so I want to tell you thank you for 30 years of interesting work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jaggers, on, on behalf of the entire county commission, I know that you've given many, many years of dedicated service, and we certainly appreciate that. I'm going to give you a privilege tonight that folks don't have. I'm going to ask you and your family to walk up here with Mayor Anderson and and uh, the presenter of the proclamation so that you can get a good official picture. Come on up here in uh, the pit of the county commission and stand up here. Rogers, come on up here with him. and. Uh, the family, as well as any of the press, you, you guys line up like you want to. Lee, come on up here. You guys stand here facing them and make a good, good photograph uh, so that you're not so scattered out. I don't know, but right, you got a wide angle, don't you? Get, get the mayor in there. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor? And thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a proclamation here that uh, part of the agreement that we try to do every 10 years is to uh, recognize the importance of the United States Census Bureau as required by the Constitution of the United States of America to conduct a count of the population and provide a historical opportunity for Williamson County to help shape the foundation of our society and play an active role in American democracy. Williamson County is committed to that. Over 30, 300 million dollars per year in federal and state funding is allocated to communities and decisions made on matters of national 
and local importance based on census data, including health care, community development, housing, education, transportation, social services, employment, and many, many more things. This uh, census in 2010 will create hundreds of thousands of jobs across the nation, and we've been committed to that. Joe Horn will be spearheading that effort up here in the county, working with all of the cities. And so tonight it was only fitting that we acknowledge what we're doing for the 2010 census, and we encourage all of our citizens to participate in that because it does mean so much money for all of us. Thank you, sir. Any questions of uh, Mayor Anderson on the census? This is very critical to us, and we'll be talking about that uh, over the next several weeks. Uh, I see no questions. Thank you. Each of you have laid in front of you this evening uh, a minute correction sheet that uh, is one page, an excerpt from the minutes uh, from our meeting in March. And I'd just like to point that correction to your attention after these minutes were put together and distributed. The, the votes on the resolution for the sewer extension project, uh, the vote was recorded exactly correct. 10, 4, 11, yes, but when the record was recorded, it recorded Commissioner Hester as voting uh, no on the first one, and she voted yes, so we had Commissioner Green voting the wrong way, so the chair has asked the clerk to make those corrections. The votes were properly recorded on the voting machine, so I just wanted you to be aware to officially make the record correct and thank Commissioner Hester for bringing that to our attention. And that correction is laid in front of you tonight that uh, we've updated those minutes. So it's just a one page excerpt uh, that corrects that vote uh, and switches the two. Moving on to reports of uh, county offices. Uh, Mayor Rogers Anderson. Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to break this up into three parts. We have a guest. If Gina would come on up, Gina Ryan, she's here and speaking on behalf of uh, Workforce Essentials. We're trying to get the message out that uh, we're needing some um, assistance. There's been some federal dollars uh, that have been appropriated for uh, the Middle Tennessee area and specifically Williamson County. Uh, Gina is a native, lives here in our community, and so I'm very honored that she would take the time and, and uh, explain the procedures we have for these, uh, these youth that uh, we need for employment. The second part of it is, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to bring up David Coleman to give you an overview of the county and the things that we normally do. And in the third part of that, I would like to have a discussion before we actually get into the resolution so you can hear some of the things that we've done on the school funding um, on, in the third part of this, if you would allow that. Thank Gina. you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Anderson. I appreciate having the time to share some information with you about an exciting new program in Williamson County. My name is Gina Ryan, and I'm serving Workforce Essentials as the Summer Youth Jobs Coordinator. I have secured over 100 positions for youth in our county in governmental and nonprofit agencies. The program is funded, as he mentioned, by some federal stimulus dollars, and it's designed to benefit disadvantaged youth. We are serving young people ages 14 through 24 in this program. However, Due to limited opportunities for the younger age group, we are now accepting applications only for, uh, for those 18 through 24 at this time. The program begins June 1st and runs through July 31st. The participants will work 30 to 40 hours per week and they'll be paid $7.25 an hour. They'll receive a weekly paycheck from Workforce Essentials. I wanted to be here tonight to make you aware of the program and to also solicit your support in getting the word out to these young people in our county about this program. If you know of any interested young people ages 18 through 24, please have them check out our website at workforceessentials.com. They can actually uh, apply for a job online or they can uh, come to our office at the Career Center on NOAA Drive to fill out a paper application. And those applications are due on May 20th. 
I believe that you all received an information packet about this program, including my contact information, and I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. But I do thank you for helping me get the message out about this good program. Thank you. Any, any questions of Gina this time? Thank you, Gina, for being here. Certainly appreciate what you're doing. Mr. Coleman. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we'll go over the three reports that we normally give you each month, and we've got a little catching up to do since we didn't meet last month. But the first one is the report from the Cool Springs Conference Center. And for the month of March, uh, we received a check for just over $44,000. And for the month of April, we got our report today that we'll be receiving a check for almost $27,000. So things continue to go well there at the conference center. We will be seeing you with a resolution in June. We have to budget two different line items for the conference center. One is the revenue where they cut us a check, and then we have to budget an expenditure line item for each month that we have to cut them a check. So we are a little over on what we've had to pay them. But I'll bring you those figures next month. We are uh, considerably over the revenue, so we're really in good shape, but we just have to kind of balance that out a little bit, and we'll be bringing you that in the month of June. Then we have the privilege tax reports that we've been looking at very closely the last several months. Um, we kind of had a little bit of a trend going, and March continued that trend and was up just a little bit. And then uh, April, we kind of fell back off again. So uh, we hope that we can be able to finish strong in May and June. You also have the graph report that IT has been doing for us that shows you the privilege tax collections and also on the bottom of that chart, the adequate schools facilities tax. So if you have any questions about those. And then the third item that we normally bring to you each month is the monthly budget report. We have the reports for the month of February and for the month of March. The month of March gives you three quarters of the budget year. Uh, everything appears to be uh, going pretty much on track. If you take the budgeted amounts and multiply those by 75%, three quarters of the year, everything appears to be in pretty good shape. So we'll continue to watch that very closely and see how the revenue does these last three months of the year. Any questions on those, Mr. Chairman, before we go on? Any questions from any commissioner? I see none. Thank you, sir. Proceed. Mr. Chairman, one item I'd want to touch on just briefly uh, in the way of information. Many of you may have read in the paper this Sunday uh, an article concerning the municipal bond fund and some irregularities that have gone on there and a uh, report that the Tennessean made. And, of course, I'm sure many folks said, well, how does this affect Williamson County? We do borrow some variable rate debt from the Tennessee County loan pool, which is also part of that same umbrella there. Of our total debt of approximately $460 million, we only have $9.7 million in that variable rate loan pool. That's about 2%. But we are looking into that, started this morning working with Stevens and Sam Cruz, our financial advisor, going back and pulling the reports from previous months and looking at those, uh, checking the interest rates. And we've been monitoring those interest rates really for almost a year now once the variable rate uh, financing really had a lot of questions concerning it. So we started monitoring those rates to make sure they did not spike up on us. The rates, if you look at them themselves, have remained very low. But the concern we have is that the correct rate that we should have been getting, should it have been even less. And so we are going back and looking at that, and we'll be pulling all the reports back to July the 1st. And then if we see any irregularities, we'll go back even further than that. Thank you, Mr. Coleman, for that report. Any questions on uh, this issue that uh, Mr. Coleman's reported to us? I see none. Mayor. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and uh, County Commissioners, this is a little unusual the way that we're going at this tonight, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to hear the discussion that we've had. <clears throat> I guess it's been a week now. 
last uh, Monday night at the uh, budget, Monday afternoon at the budget committee, we looked at all the resolutions, and the resolution we're making reference to is in reference to the 5093, which is a $22 million intent to fund for the new elementary school and the land purchase. A lot of discussion came out of that, but I want to bring you or take you back uh, to well, almost a year ago of which uh, the, the total school building program was presented, presented to you, uh, working through the school board, working through uh, the different layers that you have to go through. Uh, there was giving, there was taking, and there was some concessions and agreements that uh, what we would do over the next uh, two or three years in order to hold our tax rate down. During that same period of time, uh, as the national economy uh, was struggling to figure out what all it needed to do, certainly our privilege taxes, the adequate school facility taxes, the building permits, and, and the sales tax now we're beginning to see, uh, we, we were adjusting that rate on a month-by-month -month basis. I am very thankful for the school board for how they have worked with us because that's your job to push a button to figure out the funding. It's their job to provide the education. Williamson County for the last several years, long period of time, has been a leader in public education. Last Monday night, because it's the first opportunity, this, this pendulum, this ball is changing every single day. As many of you know, the governor made an announcement during his State of the State Union several things could be accomplished. Well, in the last 60 to 90 days, those numbers aren't matching up. And that's important to remember. Just as David has just reported to you, we had a downward spike again on our privilege tax money for last month. We are hearing some telltale signs that the housing market is moving throughout the county, but it's not the new construction cost of where we have been able to enjoy those dollars over the last several years. I stand here tonight to tell you that working with the school board through the budget committee and the budget and, and the education committee, that the objectives on our, on our budget for this year have been met. Yes, we still have to go through a few more hoops as part of the process, but as we stand here tonight and sit here tonight, Unless something drastically happens on July the 1, you will be presented a budget that will not require a property tax increase. So keep that in mind for what I'm about to tell you. We are not talking about July 1, 2010 through July or June 30th next year. What we're talking about, and we're doing things now that we've never done before, is to forecast, look out there into the future. Try to determine what that tax rate is going to be based on the latest information that we have. We do not have a crystal ball any more than you do, but it is our job, it's the administrative side over here and the executive side, to lay that information out to you. And that's what we did last Monday night. That's not a reason not to vote for this resolution. It is a reason, though, for you to understand, and David's going to explain some of this to you, but you need to understand that in the event that things do not turn around, that you are faced with a very difficult situation, and I think it would be an appropriate situation, do you still have to fund public education? That is the heart and soul of Williamson County. It's the heart and soul of our economic developments. It's the heart and soul of why people come here. With that in mind, I'd like for David to give you an overview of what you have already voted on what's coming down the pike to the best of our abilities. And then we're going to throw another scenario at you that's come about as late as last Friday and we've fine-tuned it, and I'll give you that recommendation. But ultimately, it's your call to push the button. Yes, the emails have come in over the weekend, and yes, the phone calls have come in, but it's your decision as elected representatives to decide if you want that property tax increase in the year 2011. We're not talking about this year. Or do you want to roll it out a little bit further? We've got you some different options. Now, David has used the illustration. We've about skimped this rabbit about as much as we can. We keep pulling him out of the hat and changing it and massaging the numbers. But we, there's not much more we can do to him. So I'm here to tell you that these are some options that you have. And you can feel good on any way you have to vote on this particular resolution. So David, if you would kind of take us through that journey 
that we started on last Monday because I and I appreciate the school board being here tonight to hear this because this has not come out in any other format except at that budget committee. David. Mr. Chairman, what we were looking at and discussing the resolution you have before you tonight, and I appreciate uh, Dr. Heath and Ms. Holman giving some updated information, but in the event that this resolution is passed tonight, along with the resolution that you passed last November for $56 million, the cash flow of these projects next year that Ms. Holman has laid out for us we would be looking to borrow $42 million in the fall. And excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I think you all have this chart in front of you. That, that's it. $42 million in the fall of 09 and $31.5 million in the spring of 10. That's $73.5 million. This is what we talked about last Monday night with the Budget Committee. At that point, we were looking at that figure with the traditional 20-year bonds that we normally do. The new debt service in the budget year 10-11 would increase by over $6 million. And in the absence of any other kind of funding, i.e. privilege tax, which we can't really count on right now, that would take approximately 12 cents additional property tax just to pay the debt on this construction. Now, part of the discussion we did not have is the operating cost and what it costs to open a new school and get that up and running. So we're talking strictly about construction cost. At that meeting, and we were really trying to inform the budget committee about what the debt was, when it's going to hit, uh, what it would cost us. There was no effort to pull this project or to uh, derail this project. It was just to make the commissioners aware of what the funding could be and what it's going to cost us. Since that time, we've tried to think of any other method that we could handle the financing that might give some ease to that effect on the budget. Uh, talking with Sam Cruz quite at length on Friday and again today, and we've come up with several options that are out there that we could use. And I'm not going to try to go into each one of those tonight. Some of them are very complicated, even for us that deal with them all the time. But one that kind of makes sense to us, and the mayor and I have talked about this, and it's a delay, and that's all it is. Uh, we could do bond anticipation notes for the 42 million or the 31 and a half or all of it together. The rates on a one-year bond anticipation note right now is around 1%. The recommendation that we would make tonight is that we go two years, and that the rate on that would be somewhere between 1% and 1.5%. 1 During that time, we would be investing those funds and hopefully recover a good portion, if not all, of that interest through the investment of the funds. The interest that actually would come due on the bond anticipation notes would then be considered capitalized interest for the project, and that would be borrowed in the bond at the end of two years in the long-term 20-year bond. The interest would be borrowed as construction interest, capitalized interest. So we could go through that two-year period with very little or no cash from the county to pay interest. Now, as I mentioned, that gives us a couple of years to work with. It gives us a couple of years to see what this economy is going to do, uh, if it's going to turn around, uh, what other options we might have available in two years. But I just want to caution you that there will come a time that we'll have to deal with this and we'll have to pay the debt. The debt doesn't go away. We're just talking about delaying it for a couple of years. But it is an option. We think it's a good option. Some of the others are uh, not bad options, but we don't think they just fit our situation as well. Some of them involve wrapping this debt into the total debt that we already have and then rescheduling all of that. Uh, 
uh, we just feel like this is the best option for us at this time and I'll let the mayor address that if he'd like to add to that. Mr. Coleman, if you would, before you leave it, talk to us about the operational side. You talked about the 12 cents. Cover the operational side because we're opening two schools. What will that add to the 12 cents? Well, Mr. Chairman, the mayor might want to address that or we might want to get the schools. Probably would want to get the schools, but I can give you a rough number, and I don't know that I don't know that uh, Ms. Holman is prepared to give you that, but I prepared Leslie if you don't mind I would rather her give you that information to to, to uh, turn the key on on the school that's the operational side which we will have to deal with that in uh, next year's budget could I ask her to come uh, up you, it's you about 1.3 you, you reported the budget committee and that's what I wanted all the commissioners to hear it's 1.3 million to operate uh, for operational cost and other than that's that's just because okay. the budget committee heard that and I wanted to make sure that all 24 of us if uh, it, it we told the budget committee the other night if we open up uh, West Haven that's about 1.3 if you open up another elementary that's about 1.3 and the middle school is a little bit higher around 1.5 and a high school as you know uh, the operational sign Commissioner Barnwell please a million two million three does that include the teachers that are gonna be manning that school okay Thank you. You know, you know, it's a very complicated animal we have to deal with here, and you all know that. And we're not trying to throw a bunch of numbers at you. And David and Bond Council have come up with another solution. I would recommend to you that we at least look at and give us the flexibility to do a two-year note on an anticipation. You have to understand, in two years rollout, we could have at least a renew one renewal, maybe two. I don't want to do that but that would allow us to go on with our school project because right on the heels of this elementary school and David has Dr. Heath has done a wonderful job giving you the numbers here tonight I think it's on your desk we're going to have a problem down the Spring Hill Thompson station area of about 650 kids as school board uh, um, reported here a minute ago and I just don't think we can weather the storm that long but you do have to understand that if we roll it for two years the note we can make a little money on it we probably won't make any money on it but at least we won't have to uh, take it to the market later this fall we're at our capacity on our um, bond indebtedness for the next four to five years I believe it's about 2014 before we'll begin to see some of that debt roll off uh, that we've got ultimately it's your decision and that's what we told the budget committee now I'll try to address all those a lot of information we've thrown at you but the resolution doesn't come up for a little bit but we do have you another alternative if you want to go that route and we will be glad to work through that issue with you and we'll answer any questions now Houston if you any, any questions uh, Commissioner Hayes please mayor uh, I'm always interested in, in other solutions but I I know of the great need that we have as you outlined uh, in the Spring Hill area for the new school over 600 already over capacity children starting lunch at 1030 in the morning is not acceptable and 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 all the portables that are being proposed and that's just a temporary solution not not permanent so I guess my basic line question is in this new scenario can the school still be open in August 2010 as as is being proposed currently the only thing we're presenting to you all tonight is the vehicle for funding all of that would still be left up to them to 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 get the building up and going and I think dr. Heath mentioned that so long as they could start July he felt very comfortable to get open in August of 2010 again I'll let him address that right after me if you want to save that question but our job is giving you another option in which to to look at how we do our funding and as David has outlined Miss Hayes all we're doing is delaying the inevitable for two years out there in, out there in the, in the future maybe the economy will change around on us if it doesn't then we're looking at a property tax or some other way that we've got to handle it at that time in order not to delay it I was prepared to ask for an additional 500,000 onto the proposed amendment tonight so they could go ahead with the with the plan and adapting uh, to the, the land that's being negotiated now but if this does not slow them down and offers a good variable solution then then I would have no problem I'm just real intent on that school needs to open on time yes ma'am 
Commissioner Hancock, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mayor, on on the plan that uh, Mr. Coleman put forward with the one percent and one and a half percent of the bond anticipation notes, can we exceed? Is it changed to the point that we can exceed in earnings what that interest actually is? A, or it's a very unusual animal. In this particular one, the Bond Council is allowing us to make money on this money we borrowed. Normally we can't, but on this one we can. Why? Well, makes it a little bit more attractive to us, David. We can. We can. Interesting. We're very comfortable after Bond Council's telling us we can. <coughs> okay. are, are you comfortable that you can make money? On it? We've never made money in government. <laughs> uh, you can. But we can. Yeah, you know, we've, we, like we said, for the last six or seven years, we've moved money around more than I could ever dream about. And only Sam Cruz and Stevens and some of the people, Bassberry and Sam's working with us. Uh, but ultimately, it's your all's call. It's your call. Thank you. You bet, Mr. Chair. Chair recognizes Commissioner Parra, please. Um, when we borrowed money a couple months ago, we got a real good rate on the bond, as I understand. So if we push off borrowing this a couple years, isn't there a risk that a couple years from now that rate's going to be bad and we'll all be sitting here saying, I wish we would have bought it now versus later? Yes. We, we have certainly thought about that, and there's two scenarios there. If we put off with this two-year bridge to get to this project done if we put it off for two years the rate certainly could go up if we delay the project for two years we're looking at the same problem the rates could go up so you know that's yes there's certainly a possibility they could uh, if we get two years out and the economy has changed and the rates are the same we've hit a home run and, uh, we just won't know till we get there if <laughs> just one more uh, address mr. Hancock's uh, if we sell 20-year bonds, we're selling those as tax-exempt bonds, and we cannot exceed the interest on those. But on these bond anticipation notes, we would be putting them out to a bank or another lender, uh, just like any other note. Follow up, I might. Go ahead, sir. Uh, have we borrowed at any, have we ever borrowed at rates less than what we borrowed at recently? Not to my knowledge, no. So, so what are the chances it's, I mean, it's always a variable, but I mean, if we're now at historically low rates, I mean, why would we believe it's going to be even lower two years from now? Uh, let me try to address that, Commissioner. It's, it's not a matter of if we think it's low or high. It's a matter of, of when you borrow the money and when the interest, the principal and the interest comes in. Again, I want to emphasize July 1 this year through next year, we're comfortable. But if we borrowed the money, say, in the latter part of this year, in December, let's say we borrowed $40 million. In six months, the interest is due on that. And then in six more months, the interest in the principal is due on that. So it's a matter of when it hits and what year it hits. If everything stays about the same now, all we're re relaying to you, if we don't have an increase in sales tax, if we don't look at the privilege tax and some other values, and many of you know in the year 20, January 1, 2011, will be the reappraisal rollout date. I couldn't tell you if it's up, couldn't tell you if it's going to be down, but I don't think it'll be down very much. It'll happen very similar to what's happening up in Davidson County because you do a four to five year window and that's Dennis Anglin's area. But there will be a time in t January 1, 2011, the reappraisals will come out on all the property that we've got. So uh, it, it's, I can't stand here and tell you what the interest rates, we borrowed, um, 50 million for about 3.82, something like that. It's a good interest rate. Uh, borrowing uh, this amount of money for around 1% for one or two years sounds good, but you do have to pay it back. Got a question. Commissioner Cook, please. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up too was the construction costs. From what I've seen in some minor work I've had done at my house, um, people are, you know, clamoring for work and uh, at cheaper prices than they had given us bids six months ago. So I was wondering if that would correlate to the schools too. Wouldn't the construction costs also be a lower now? Well, 
Well, we'd certainly think the, we feel comfortable. We're doing some other, we've only got one project out that I know of right now, and it's the sewer grassland project, and we had 13 people to qualify for it, and 12 made the, the final cut. So we're seeing a lot of activity out there, people wanting work. Uh, I suspect that would hold true for building schools as it would be in your case of the residential. But, but again, we've got to know X amount of dollars in which to borrow. And of course, the schools, uh, they oversee that money and they, they already turn it to us, whatever they don't spend. Had a question. Follow up, Commissioner Cook? Yeah, no. Commissioner Barnwell, please. Yes, uh, Mayor Anderson, I would presume that uh, if we do this financing that we would still watch the market rates very closely to say, okay, maybe now is the time to jump in with the real McCoy type financing, um, or do we got to stick with that? Yeah, you have to, when you do this type of scenario, um, you're, you're making a commitment, and um, the people that invest in that want their money back. Now, we could put a premium on that, Commissioner. We could ask them to bid on that money, that X amount of dollars, and say, we if the market changes, we'd like the opportunity to resell that or sell it back. Uh, if you do that, you're going to have a premium charge put on, okay. just like, and you would expect that. But this is a lock-in for either one year or two years, and two years seems to be the best best way. So no, you could sell. Maybe could buy it back and go the other unless way. You, unless we tell them up front. Okay. Other other questions of uh, the mayor or Mr. Coleman. Thank you. Report from schools, Dr. David Heath. Thank you. I'd like to speak to the resolution that you're seeing just in terms of numbers. And I placed some, some uh, documents in front of you. But one I really want to talk about <clears throat> is the one entitled student enrollment and it shows on it the three schools in the south part of the county and also it has a, a little section at the bottom on Trinity Elementary because those are the two school communities that are impacted by this resolution. Right now if we were to look at the schools today in March of this year we were 2,656 students among those three schools in the south, and 2,656 students is without consideration of the early childhood special ed population, which were mandated by LADA to provide an education for. It's also without regard to the number of pre-kindergarten classrooms that we have, and we have some of those uh, in that community. We do have and did build three extra classrooms at uh, Longview when we built that school to house that special ed population because we wanted to maintain the 800 student capacity in all our new schools and yet we needed to build capacity for special ed populations in cluster communities. We did the same thing at Sunset. We built extra classrooms there, three. We did the same thing at Walnut Grove a few years ago. So we have three clusters for the special ed population. Now since then, we've had to move the, the students from Sunset over to Nolensville because of crowding the special ed populations. And, and at some point, we'll have to move them back. But nonetheless, not to confuse that issue, we are projecting for next, for the 2009-2010 school year, 2,782 2782 students in those three schools. If we were to project just 100 students, and 100 students is really for three schools in the south part of the county, 100 students in K-5 is really a very limited, very different kind of projection than you've been seeing down there. It doesn't uh, reflect the kind of growth that we've been seeing, we still would open or would still have by the 2011 school year approximately, or the 2010 school year when this school opened, 2010-2011, we'd have approximately 2,800 students, which is enough to physically have four schools of 700. So we really don't have much room left in those schools for growth. When we open them, and that's been one of the problems. If you, as you know, we opened Longview with 660 kids, and it's already full. Uh, 
So the issue is a little bit different. The scenario is a little bit different for this reason. We have we had 12 portables at Chapman's Retreat before we opened Longview, but we were able to maintain the students in that zone on that campus. We're going to be very close to the first time since I've been with the system, the possibility of having to rezone students to another portable on another campus because as you know about elementary populations, when you get into state averages, if you go one over, you have to create another classroom. So we could very easily, with just the lower growth rate, end up having to bus students and rezone students for a year over to uh, Longview just, and, and that's something we've never had to do. So that's another consideration for the reason that this the school is really needed at this time. We thought perhaps the growth would really drop. We haven't seen much difference this year. We've really seen about the same amount of students during the school year. We always have a larger number moved during the summer, but we've seen about the same amount during the school year that we've been seeing. We haven't seen a lot of change in that. If you look a minute at Trinity, we're asking for land to purchase to build a school to help reduce the overcrowding at Trinity. Now, Trinity is not right at the moment overcrowded. We do plan on having two portables there this year. And we can add, I, I misspoke the other night, I said we couldn't add any more. I think they're gonna let us add one more if we have to next year. But Trinity gained 114 students next year, last year. And we're not projecting but about 40 or 50 next year, but still at that rate, we're going to run into the same problem there before we can get a school built. And we don't have a solution for those kids except to rezone possibly to Kenrose for a year because we've added classrooms. A lot of our efforts for the past six or seven years have been to, instead of building so many new buildings, trying to take our existing facilities, adding enough classrooms onto those facilities to increase their capacities to 800. And we've done that. and, and have been able to manage housing quite a few more students with a much less expensive cost than building a new school. But we can't do much with these two populations and we're, we're behind the eight ball as far as time in being able to uh, manage that population effectively and provide uh, educational services that, that people in Williamson County have learned to expect and we believe uh, should have. So I'll answer questions if you have questions about any of the, the numbers or figures. Uh, we did provide you some long-term enrollment uh, projections that we'd given you last fall. We've updated those showing what our current things were. Those were updated as of today. So that's information in there, but we're really, the, the resolution is really about these two school communities. Okay, questions of uh, Dr. Heath. Commissioner Hayes, please, you're recognized. Dr. Heath, I'll ask you the same thing I did the mayor. Will the approval of this resolution tonight and the, the creative uh, work that he and, and Mr. Coleman have done, would that slow down this, this building of the school? And can we still be in it by August 2010? For seeing any, anything that's less than a disaster, it's about 12 months for an elementary school. We're using a, a plan that we're using at West Haven, which has just gone through the fire marshal's office. We reuse the same plan. We don't have to wait that 60 to 90 days again because it's just gone through. So uh, we don't see a reason to uh, that we can't have that school open by August of 2010. So you believe this would work? Yes. Now, I understand that the West Haven bid is due in, in late May based it's on what uh, Commissioner um, Cook said, we hope that that will come in less than, than anticipated. Should that uh, come in less, we would be in a little better shape, right? Because right. we could appropriate that money. It is true that the school systems that have gotten bids just recently, Rutherford County's gotten some, they are considerably better than what you might have gotten two years ago, a year and a half ago. And we anticipate that we're going to see some of that uh, reduction in cost. but. But it's an unknown because we, we just put the, the West Haven School out to bid. We'll be putting the new high school out to bid reasonably soon, but it won't be in by that date. But West Haven will be in by May 28th, so we'll know kind of know what to expect. Uh, 
And one follow-up, uh, as I understand it, negotiations are very close about the land, but it has not been purchased at this point. There's been some discussion, and we have a willing seller, but it is not in our keeping yet, right? Right. We uh, that we made an offer, they countered, and we've countered. So that's where we are at this point. Thank you, sir. Chair recognizes Commissioner Para. Um, two questions, if I would. Uh, the first would be, when you updated the growth numbers, you only updated this year. You didn't go out and survey developers to find out, are they really on their build track that they planned before, right? No, we just updated the information that we had on current growth. We did not go out because this came up, the need for this came up really quickly. And to have this updated, we do that usually once a year, but it's normally done in the fall rather than we do our five-year plan. Okay. The second question is, look, looking at the numbers, uh, what I'm confused about is why um, we need West Haven more desperately than we need this Spring Hill Elementary. Because the West Haven numbers, it looks to me like there's enough capacity at other schools that you could rezone and push West Haven back a year and pull this forward. There really isn't any capacity, that, and that is the same situation we were faced last year with Walnut Grove. We had to move kids out of Walnut Grove just for this year to get through the year to anticipate, take care of their growth for next year to uh, Hunter's Bend. But Hunter's Bend doesn't have enough room to take care of all that population with the growth that's coming out of West Haven. West Haven is going to open with about only about 400 kids, uh, but we really don't have schools in that general vicinity cluster that could take that population, which is why we said uh, we needed a school at West Haven. West Haven continues to grow. We have the figures of how many kids are at certain ages they provide us. They have a directory in their uh, community that shows the ages of children in every household there, and we do know how many ch students are coming to each grade every year. Uh, we, p we have the possibility that we have some schools uh, south of here that could potentially have to be rezoned to some students to uh, West Haven as well. So it's not, Walnut Grove was the primary reason and that was the school that was overcrowded that we didn't have a solution for, but there's also the potential for other schools feeding into that school that are at capacity right now. But, I mean, the numbers show you had 58 free capacity in 2011-12 at Hunter's Bend and you could add three more portables. So how is there not capacity to push back well, West Haven one year? We have moved three classrooms, three uh, special ed EC classrooms there for next year. We are taking up three classrooms right now for next year at Hunter's Bend. So, so these numbers aren't accurately reflecting what Well, they don't reflect what we're having to do next year, no. They reflect only what what existed today, but we've already made that decision because Walnut Grove won't hold those uh, that population next year. Thank you. Chair recognizes Commissioner Langston, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, just a couple of questions that you uh, touched on, Dr. Heath. Uh, could, what are the size of the schools that you're looking at building in these two areas? And will they, as you have been able to do at some other schools, but not at other schools, will you be able to add on to those new schools? Right now we're still looking at building a core capacity, student capacity of 800 students, which means that while we could add on to it, it's not that you can't add on any more onto a school. What you would have to do is to build another gym, more cafeteria space, you would have to add to the infrastructure. And we have not done that. We've tried to maintain the 800 capacity. We can do that with one gym and get the kids the P they're required to get every week. It gets very difficult to do that with more than 800. So that's, that's what the, the core capacity of students for each of these new schools will be 800. Mr. Chalfont, please. Dr. Heath, uh, in the, the three schools, the Chapman's Retreat, Heritage, and Longview, how many uh, portables are we using in total there? Right now, we have Just six the, portables at Heritage. We own four, and we're leasing two uh, currently. We have if you were to drive out to Chapman's Retreat, you would see seven portables. We're adding one next year. We only have students in four of those because it was we knew we were going to have to have them there last year. We didn't move those portables 
because it was cost more to move them and move them back than it did to leave them there for a year and pay rent. So we have, we'll have eight at uh, Chapman's next year, and Longview, we will be adding three next year. Do, do you use, uh, are there two classes per portable? Yes. So that would give you an indication of the amount of classroom space that you really are short right now. It, is that, is that reasonable? Well, I, and I said that. I want to take that back. That's not true. It's just one per. We, we could get double portables. We don't have double portables in most instances. You can get portables with bathrooms. We don't have bathrooms in our portables uh, because by the time you make those connections, and hopefully we're making short-term kinds of things, so um, we're, you, you figure about 25 students per portable if they're fifth grade, and most schools are going to put fifth grade, then fourth grade outside the older students rather than younger students. But this would still give you a, a fair right. idea of, right. of the space that you need uh, pretty well right now. Right. Thank you. Other questions uh, at this time of Dr. Heath, uh, I'd, I'd like at this time to recognize the fact and Commissioner Lynch, I apologize for not welcoming you back. Uh, it's glad to have you back with us tonight. Other questions of Dr. Heath, we're still in the report section of our agenda. Any questions? We'll be addressing the resolution at the point on the agenda. Commissioner Hester, you're recognized, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Dr. Heath, do we have any idea of the population with these three elementary schools in Spring Hill as to what the kindergartens are, are going to have next year, uh, the enrollments for kindergarten in these three elementary schools? We just project at this point kindergarten. We, we do get enrollments uh, in the spring, but right now we don't have the exact number, and there will be kids who come, don't come in in the spring and come in the fall. Thank but you. kindergarten's always tough because we know the how many we have to go from a grade level to the other, but kindergarten is is uh, not a, a known fact. Any other questions of Dr. Heath? Thank you. Stay close. This time on the agenda, you've been given several pieces of information, and our trustee, Joey Davis, is here. Joey, if you would come forward at this time and report on the information that, that you've shared with us. Several have indicated that they wanted to hear from you, so if you could do that, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, County Commissioners, on Wednesday we mailed you a letter that uh, uh, Chairman Aaron had asked us to provide you with some numbers, and we felt like it would be easier to mail those to you rather than stand here and go through and read a bunch of numbers. Are there any questions from this document I could answer? I placed one on your desk or in front of you that looks like this a few moments ago. Commissioner Aaron, Commissioner Hayes, and Commissioner Greer had asked me to give you some further numbers, and these are simple, so I can I will read these. And this is the income limits because you've had some questions from your constituents of what the income limits will be for tax relief for next year. This year, the Tennessee State, State of Tennessee Tax Relief Program is $24,790. Uh, $24, for 2009 taxes, that increases to $25,360. For our program, the Williams County Broad-Based Tax Relief Program, that was $29,800 for 2008 taxes. For 2009 taxes, that will be $30,570. Now, here's the one that gets confusing for all of us. The Williamson County Property Tax Freeze Program for 2008 was $44,570. For 2009, that is $45,600. Now, what happened during our 2008 tax season the numbers that we gave you in there, 1,200, I believe, that we approved, they made application to have their 2009 property taxes frozen at the 2008 level. So this new income of $45,600, they will start making an application this summer, we hope, to have their 2010 
taxes frozen at the 2009 level. The ones that we approved for 2008, their taxes are frozen. You just heard Mr. Colvin, Mary Anderson mentioned 12 cent tax increase. And assuming that passes for the year 2010, the ones that we approved at 2008, that level is this year's taxes. Confusing, I know. Work with it every day. Any questions? Any questions of uh, Trustee Davis because this information has been shared uh, with us on a regular basis and I know Commissioner Greer's committee heard on tax study committee several of the documents here that have been shared with you. So uh, any, any questions of uh, Trustee Davis as it relates to this information? Commissioner Hayes, please. I know from some people who have come in to apply for the tax freeze that with the good cooperation of you and your excellent staff that they have found they qualified for other tax relief programs too and they've left very happy. I hope that you will continue going to the senior citizens and going around to let this message be out there because somewhere in the future we will be looking at a tax increase. We don't know why we, when or where or at what stage but if people don't when they qualify get their name in the pot they're going to miss out and we want to encourage them to go ahead and apply. So will you continue going around and, and requesting that and give our appreciation to your staff? Thank you very much. We intend in the next few days to put out a letter to everyone who is on property tax relief and property tax freeze asking them to call our office starting in June to make appointments. We're going to see if we can take some of the people out of the office that we had such backups and lines. These are great programs. You ought to be commended. Uh, Commissioner Naren. Commissioner Hayes and several of you were here back in 96 when we started this Williams County Broad Base Tax Relief Program. Commissioner Hancock, these are great programs and if they are, if they're administered like they're approved, both by the state and by Williams County Commission, they're great programs. As you know, we had some big barn doors in the property tax freeze in the state program, but uh, we met today again and I do believe that those doors have been closed and the programs will be like they're intended to be. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Any, any other Governor. questions or uh, comments? Uh, Trustee Davis, I was asked a question before the meeting started in, in 10 words or less. What happens when people file a protest and their taxes are paid under protest? Uh, the law says that I have to notify you. I have to not all, notify all county commissions that someone paid their taxes under protest. Uh, there are magic words. If for any reason, uh, that, let's take you, Commissioner, uh, Chairman Naren, if you pay your taxes and then something else down the line changes that tax, you cannot get a refund. If you've paid under protest, you can get a refund. I call them magic words. Very good. Thank Any you other all. questions? Thank you all very much. Thank you for the support of our office. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any other committee wishing to report? And l let me commend the department heads that do send us information in advance. Uh, I'd also like to encourage the department heads. There are several things that were laid up here tonight that are rather lengthy. As chairman of the commission, I ask you please put get those in the packets. It's very difficult to sit up here and look at a lengthy report tonight to, to be informed and have it laid up here unless it's extenuating circumstances. So I would ask you, our rules suggest and, and ask our department heads to include all that information to the extent possible and put it in our packet because it helps us uh, get through our meetings. Anybody else wishing to report uh, anything? Uh, Commissioner uh, Wilson, Wilson you, you, I, I was handed something just a few minutes ago that you have got a report, so I'll should, would you uh, share that with us? Yes, I'd be happy to. In, in your packet, you will notice an invitation and this invitation is issued uh, for Wednesday, May the 13th at 6 o'clock. At the uh, location would be the Bungernut Pig uh, off of Columbia Pike. And the sister cities of Franklin and Williamson County Incorporated and Amore College is extending an invitation for you to meet and greet uh, with uh, Irish exchange students and professors from a college in County Leash, Ireland. They're here to attend summer classes at a Moore College of Design to learn more about uh, this beautiful area, uh, our city and our county area, 
and I'd it, please encourage you to come. These people had fundraisers and uh, earned their way basically here, and I think we owe that to them. And uh, three three of them have never been to the United States before, and they are very excited and it's it's worth our getting out there and trying to meet these people again it's wednesday night at six o'clock at the bunker pig thank, thank you thank you commissioner barnwell please yes. mr chairman i'd just like to announce that the uh next scheduled meeting of the education committee was supposed to be on memorial day but we moved that back to may 26th uh, due to the holiday education committee may 26. Six. It should be on the 25th, but that's Memorial Day. Okay. So you pushed it out to the 26th. Also, the notice that the Human Resources Committee schedule for May the 18th has been canceled due to lack of business. So other, other committee reports, anything uh, this time? I see none. Moving on on the agenda over to elections and appointments. County Mayor, Emergency Communications Board of Directors, the City of Franklin representative for a four-year term expiring on March of 13, 2013. Tom Fureborn is the current uh, E911 board member and the recommendation from Mayor Anderson is Tom Fureborn. Approval, Commissioner Langston, the motion. Commissioner Smith, the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. County Commission, Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, Mr. Jaggers, uh, someone filling his ex unexpired term that expires in March of 2011. The nomination is uh, Karen Emerson McPeak. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Commissioner Wilson, Commissioner Tommy Little, the second. All in favor say aye. Opposed, show it unanimous. Hospital Board of Trustees, three-year terms expiring May of 2012. Districts five and six, Kathy McGee. Nomination, Kathy McGee. At large districts, one, two, three, and four. Brown Daniel. Nomination, Brown Daniel. Districts nine and 10, James Bo Butler. Nomination, James Bo Butler. Commissioner Lynch has made the motion. Second. Commissioner Green, the second for the Hospital Board of Trustees. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Show it unanimous. Notaries, so you've received the list of notaries from Mrs. Anderson. I'll entertain a motion to accept. So Commissioner Smith, the motion. Commissioner Walton, the second to approve the notaries as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Show that to unanimous as well. Under there is no consent agenda. Moving on to appropriations. There are no zoning issues for tonight. Resolution number 5091. Resolution transferring sale of property funds. 2,135,000 to the county. Uh, Commissioner Barnwell, please. Move for approval. Who is the second? Uh, Commissioner Tommy Little. The second uh, report of the committees. The school board was 11 yes, 0 no. Education committee? 4 4 0 against. Thank you. Budget committee? Budget committee 4 4 0 against. Thank you. Uh, explanation, Commissioner Barnwell? Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is the sale of the Berry property that became surplus to the school system. Uh, they went out and did their appropriate bidding process, and uh, this was the the uh, the accepted bid it was at the appraised value and we originally had one one million eight into it the next resolution will tell tell what we're going to do with the money any questions on uh, 5091 mr coleman would you make your way up so that you can officially report to the commission the question has been asked because it was miscommunicated and reported to some folks about it's great how much money we made on this transaction. Would you report the official numbers to this body to re remove any rumors that we made any money on that uh, purchase and sale? 
Mr. Chairman, if you recall, uh, this purchase was made from two bond issues. The first bond issue was in 1999. We borrowed $600,000, and then when the property was identified and a price was set, we borrowed another million two in 2000. So we have 10 years of interest on the 600,000 at approximately $150,000 and nine years of interest on the million two at approximately $270,000. So when you take this, the purchase price plus the interest paid and the sales price, we have paid about $85,000 more in interest than we received on the sale price. So, you know, with comments that look at all the money that we made the county, uh, we actually spent $85,000 more than we made. So just wanted a record to reflect that so that that dispels that rumor for certain. Other questions on 5091? 5091 is up for consideration. If you're in favor of 5091, press the yes button. Opposed, your no button. Has everybody voted? If you wish to vote, record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. With 21 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. 21 yes. And zero no. Now we're taking up a resolution number 20 that uh, takes this money and uh, makes the appropriate application. So if you would uh, pull resolution number 20 forward. Resolution number 50920, resolution authorizing the disposition of proceeds from the sale of certain property in the amount of $2,135,000 to defees remaining maturities of the county's outstanding rural school bonds series 1999 and rural school <coughs> bonds series 2000 and amending the 2008-9 Rural Debt Service Budget by $2,157,200. Commissioner Green. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hancock. The second. Budget Committee Report. Budget Committee 440 again. Thank you. Commissioner Green, explanation please. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to David if anybody has any questions. But this is reinvesting the money from the sale of the property we just mentioned in the previous uh, resolution plus an additional $22,200, and this is being used to uh, uh, roll over into a uh, pay off some interest that was due, what have you. And David, I'll just leave it up to you to explain if anybody has any questions. Tell us about this defeasement. All right, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, go back just a little bit, and uh, when you have funds returned like this where money's been borrowed on bonds, we really only have two options. One of those is to pay debt with it, or the other one is to assign it to a new construction project. With the constraints in next year's budget, we felt like it was good to apply it to the debt, and it just worked out very uh, coincidentally that the debt on the 1999 bond uh, for this purchase and the debt on the 2000 bond uh, for next year is almost exactly the amount of money that was received by the school board. So uh, we felt like that was a good use of the money. Without this money, we would have been looking at approximately $16 million budget for the rural debt next year. And with the application of this money, we'll be looking at approximately $14 million. So it's certainly a very timely thing, and we appreciate their efforts in helping us with that. The 22200 is the amount that would be needed to actually pay the full amount of the debt. With this $2.1 million sitting in escrow, we feel like we will earn most of that interest back, if not all of it. Any questions of Mr. Coleman? I see none. 50920. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Commissioner Hester. I'm sorry. I... Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. It, this is called the Barry property. Is it on, on Barry's Chapel Road, or uh, could I get some clarification there, please, sir? Mayor Anderson, uh, it's. Uh, it's on South Barry's Chapel Road, where Brookside Drive basically comes in. The mayor explained exactly where that is. If you were going, uh, it's out in the 8th District with Jack and um, Commissioner Davis. Um, if you go out Linwood Way, come to the first uh, stop sign. Uh, if you'll turn right 
and then there's a little road on the right that goes back. Um, I forgot exactly how many acres it was. Somebody help me out. I'm drawing a blank. That they purchased. So it's at the, it's the old road of, of uh, Southbury's Chapel where you turn left and go back the way we used to travel. That road's been blocked off now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Other questions? I'm sorry, Commissioner Hester. Any other questions? I see none. 50920, amending the rural debts up for consideration. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 21 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. 21 yes and 0 no. Resolution number 5092, resolution appropriating $14,114 state funds for pre-K software materials and supplies. Uh, Commissioner Barnwell, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Little, Tommy, a second. School board, 12 yes, zero no. Education committee. Four yes, zero no. Budget committee. Budget committee, four, four. Zero again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Barnwell, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The state has awarded our pre-K program $14,114 for a program called Touching the Lives of Children. These funds will be used for software, materials, and supplies. It's all state money. It's no local match. Questions of Commissioner Barnwell? I see none. 5092 is up for consideration. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Board to vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 21 yes. 21 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 5023, resolution requesting the Williamson County Board of County Commissioners approval of an intent to fund up to $22 million for a new elementary school building and land purchase. Commissioner Barnwell. Move for approval. Second, Second uh, Commissioner. Hayes, uh, the second, uh, school board, 11, yes, zero, no. Education committee? Four, four, zero against as thank, written. Thank you. Budget committee? Budget committee, four, four, zero against as amended. And the amendment was? The amendment is to amend the amount to $1,200,000 for the fund of land use only. Uh, would you like to make that amendment? I will make that amendment. All right. Yep. Is there a second to the amendment? Motion is made and seconded to offer the amendment of, um, to amend the resolution amount to $1,200,000. Now let's discuss the uh, discussion on the amendment that's offered by the Budget Committee. I'll, I will uh, recognize Commissioner Lynch. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Green is the one made the amendment on the Budget Committee and I seconded it. He has asked me to pull the amendment that the Budget Committee put on, on this resolution, and I so move. I agree with Mr. Anderson. We need to follow the way he outlined the purchase of this, but i tell you one thing. Two years from now, we're going to have to bite the bullet and pay. So you, as the maker of the amendment... No, he seconded it. Are, are, no, he seconded. Okay, Commissioner Green, and you made the amendment. It's been pulled... And I pull the, I also pull that amendment. You pull the amendment and Mr. Lynch second it and you're withdrawing your second. With so, second. Mr. Council, uh, I, uh, I... Now you need to second from the amendment as it was placed on the floor of the Don't commission, which I believe was Langston. Commissioner Langston. Okay. I will remove Okay. So we have removed the motion and second of the amendment from the Budget Committee. That's appropriate. I'll rule if that's accepted. And then the maker of the motion on the amendment on the floor tonight from Commissioner Green has been withdrawn and Commissioner Langston, you're withdrawing your second. Yes. So we're now back to resolution number 5093 as presented, unamended in its original form. That's where we are. Discussion on 5093 as filed with no amendments at this point. Commissioner Hayes is recognized first. I think we've heard many times tonight about the crowded conditions and how much we need this school. 
we need it on the time that is time frame that is being planned. We already know that we're over capacity and we will be more so. So we need to go ahead and do that. The fact that portables are there in the quantities they are now indicate that the temporary solution has been long enough temporary. We need to go ahead and, and build those schools. Children in a uh, temporary uh, classroom or a portable, they have to uh, go into the main house, the main school, go to the bathrooms. To have 100 to 200 children waiting in line to go to a bathroom takes away from the instructional time, and that's not satisfactory. To think of having three additional portables put at Longview for one year's time is not acceptable either. I've done a lot of reading over in those schools, and I'll tell you, uh, you don't have to go far in the uh, Chapman's Retreat to see how crowded they are. And they do need this school, and we ask that you support this funding. We like the creative way that, that Mr. Coleman and, and Mayor Anderson uh, outlined, and let's make sure that these schools are built for the 2010 school year because they're needed. It's a matter of uh, necessity, and I don't think we can compromise on our children's education. Thank you, Commissioner Hayes. Mayor Anderson, before we start through many, many speakers, uh, could, could you clarify to this body, is in fact, you talked about this being an option, is in fact that your recommendation, sir? As I outlined earlier, I would ask that somewhere during this conversation that you uh, give us some latitude <clears throat> and some flexibility, but also allow us um, by an amendment to entertain the uh, program that we outlined for a two-year uh, two-year program. Bond anticipation no. I, I will move for that. And, <laughs> and allow us, Mr. Chairman, if I could, the, the flexibility. I know the schools will probably get started on this immediately, but allow us to watch those interest rates like we have been doing for the last several months on some of the other things we did. Motion is made by Commissioner Barnwell as an amendment. A second was from Commissioner Smith to amend the 5093 to allow Mayor Anderson the flexibility of financing this through methods that he deems appropriate uh, with the discussion that you heard on the bond anticipation notes for up to a two-year period. That's the flexibility that the mayor is asking for, and I wanted that clarified before we go through and discover that that wasn't the intent. So that's the motion. It's on the floor. I know several of you requested to speak. Uh, I'm going to call for a voice vote on that amendment, and then we'll go back to, because if I clear the machine, uh, we'll start over again. So all of you have heard the amendment. Any discussion on that amendment? I see none. All in favor of the amendment offered by Commissioner Barnwell and second by Commissioner Smith, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous adoption of the amendment. Now the motion as amended. Uh, we'll start our discussion. Commissioner Barnwell, you're recognized, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I'd like to commend the mayor and David for their uh, out-of-the-box thinking on this particular problem. And this school is needed. I, I totally concur with uh, Commissioner Hayes. Uh, initially, this we thought we could move this out to 2011 startup, and uh, the growth is is 1,200. For you all, have not seen the budget for the school system. They're projecting a growth of another 1,200 kids this year, so that really brings the need for this school to be open by 2010. We've just got to bring it back this year. Uh, it was going to have to go 2011 anyways. The growth is creating the need to do it in 2010. So I recommend we approve this resolution. And as far as the startup cost, it looks like we're by the time with the number of teachers we have in portables, so they'll just move into the real classrooms. Thank you, sir. Chair recognizes oh, the, doc, the land is necessary also, based on doc, my conversations with Dr. Heath. We do need to do purchase that land and get that program started. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Uh, that'll do me. Chair recognizes Commissioner Langston, please. I'd like to also, Mr. Chairman, add my thanks to the county mayor and to Mr. Coleman for looking at this. I don't think it's ever been a question in my mind or many other people's mind about a need for a school, but I think we began to look back in September, October, November, and the issues was really 
how will we finance this? How will the debt be managed over a two or three year period? And I think what we have done tonight is to allow us to look at that and I feel very comfortable with doing that and moving forward with it. Thank you, Commissioner Langston. Commissioner Cook, please. Well, I just wanted to reiterate what some other people said, but I also wanted to say how portables are a temporary thing. We shouldn't have students or schools have them more than about one year. Uh, I spoke with the teacher today who had a class in a portable, and, and this was at Chapman's retreat, and she said, um, when they have bad wind or a heavy rain, they have to take the kids out and bring them in. But when they bring the students into the main body of the school, they have to close the library and the computer lab, which means you've got two other objects that are used all day long in the school that can't be used because we have to bring the students in from the portables. There's no running water. There are no bathrooms. And the students are asked to bring in bottles of water so that if they need a drink, or like I had earlier, a coughing spell, they couldn't have had that. They had to go into the main building. And when you go into the main building, you have to have a buddy go with you because it brings about a danger of someone possibly lurking on the school grounds that could grab an individual student. So I'm very glad and pleased that everyone is agreeing to go ahead with this school and to thank Mr. Coleman and Mayor Anderson for looking into every way possible in funding. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Walton, please, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think we're all in agreement that the school needs to be built, but I, I'd like to direct this to the numerous emails that I received, and I'm sure everybody received, and, and a lot of them started out that said they didn't mind a tax increase. And I, I just would like to speak to those people. A year or so ago, we, we appropriated something called an adequate schools facilities tax, and with that, we share that money with the cities. In this particular city, takes their money and spends it elsewhere where some of the others we our buyer and our chairman had gone down there and asked them if they would turn that money back into us for the schools this particular city did not so if if those people could work as hard as they did on us as they do the local representatives down there there's some money there that I feel like should go to schools and that's just my two cents worth thank you thank you sir Commissioner Greer is recognized, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I too want to thank the mayor and Mr. Coleman for coming up with a, uh, maybe not a solution, but a, a way we can uh, go forward with this. Uh, I've received lots of emails and lots of calls too. And I don't question the need for the schools, but I, I have to try to balance that with the, with the ability of our citizens to pay higher taxes. And I wanted to tell you some of the things that went into uh, my thinking on that. The first is building a new school is a 20-year commitment. We issue a 20-year bond. That means we've got to pay for it over 20 years. We're obligated to repay that. And that debt can limit our ability to respond to future needs. The other thing is one of the uh, papers we got in our package was from the Williamson Medical Center, and they report that their bad debt rose from 7.9% or rose to 7.9% of patient revenue. They say that's the highest it's ever been. The trustee reports that uh, the number of bankruptcies opened rose from 33 in 2007 to 110 in 2008. The Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development reports that unemployment in March of 2009 was 8.8%. 8 
That's up from 3.5% in March of, two, of 2008. Sorry. March of 2009 was 8.8. Was 8. March of 2008 was 3.5. That, that tells me that, that there are a lot of people in the county that are struggling. And I hesitate to vote for something that will cause a tax increase on people that, that obviously can't afford it. Maybe the uh, option that the mayor and Mr. Coleman have offered uh, will cause me to consider voting for it. But I, I'm, I'm really hesitant to vote for something that's going to cause a tax increase. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Russell Little. Like to call questions. Question's been called for by second by Commissioner Walton. Let's vote to call the question. All in favor of the call of the question, say aye. Aye. Opposed? The question has been called. So we're voting on resolution 5093 as amended. And the language that's added to the resolution is amended uh, to allow the flexibility for the mayor to seek funding mechanisms that are acceptable to him with any flexibility with particular focus on a two-year bond anticipation note. That's the amended motion that we're voting on. Any other discussion? We'll vote at this time. If you're in favor of 5093, press the yes button. Opposed, your no button. Everybody voted to wish to vote. Record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 20 yes, one no. 20 yes and one no. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 5097, resolution appropriating and amending the 2008 <coughs> Sheriff's Office budget by $6,845. Revenues to come from Sexual Offender Registry Reserve, uh, Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Second. made and seconded. Uh, who was the second? Commissioner Smith. The second, uh, the committee reports from 5097, Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Saving in favor of zero against. Thanks, sir. Uh, Budget Committee, Commissioner Green, please. Budget Committee 440 again. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is just the money that's uh, being moved uh, from the registries of uh, sexual offenders registry into other uh, places so that it can be spent and used uh, in that department. This is a fee I understand that they take in with when this. I've any any questions of Commissioner Hancock on 5097? Commissioner Bain, please. I'm assuming that that fee is to keep up with the sexual offenders. Is that being done adequately? And will taking this money uh, compromise that in any way? Sheriff, uh, would you come forward, please? The question is, is uh, the $100 that's being collected, uh, the question is, is uh, does that allow us to track those sexual offenders and he, was that the accurate question yeah, there, Commissioner it, Bain? Yeah. Yes, it will, Commissioner Bain. Uh, this money is already collected. $100 per sex offender is collected annually. We've had it in a fund, but we've never been able to put it into a fund like the drug fund so you can see where we're doing with it. This will allow us to buy the equipment that we need necessary to track the sex offenders in Williamson County. So, so this money is going to that purpose? Yes, it will. Okay. Yes, yeah. Any other questions of uh, Sheriff on this on this resolution? Thank you. I see none. Thank you, Sheriff Long. Five zero nine seven is up for consideration. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Miss Anderson. Twenty one yes. Twenty one yes. Zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 50911, resolution transferring $110,000 between major categories within the 2008-9 County General Law Enforcement Budget. Commissioner Hancock, please, Move sir. for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. 
Law Enforcement Committee Report, Commissioner Hancock. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget Committee, Commissioner Green. Budget Committee, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, please, Commissioner Hancock. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is transferring money out of the field division, uh, specifically the gasoline uh, line, and transferring it into natural gas, electricity, and water. 50,000, 30,000, 30,000 for 110, respectively. Thank you, to meet sir. those rising costs. Questions of uh, Commissioner Hancock? See none. If you're in favor of 50911, <coughs> press the yes button. Oppose your no button. Court of vote, please. 21 yes, zero no. 21 yes. Zero no. Resolution is unanimously adopted. Uh, the chair has had um, requests for a recess. Let's take a, about a 10 minute recess and we'll come back uh, right now. It's uh, 847. We'll be back about uh, 857. We're in recess.
Call our meeting back to order. Uh, we're back in session. Uh, appreciate everybody. Commissioner Cook was not feeling well and has excused herself and gone home. She doesn't feel that well, so we'll be operating now absent to Commissioner Cook. We're down to, let's see, Resolution 50912, Resolution Appropriating and Amending the 2008-9 Emergency Communications Budget by $19,000 for training. Revenues to come from state grant funds. Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Commissioner Barnwell, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Six in favor, zero against. Thank you, sir. Budget Committee, Commissioner Green. Uh, Budget Committee, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, money that the Emergency Management uh, District received. It's uh, for a grant for training purposes, and its uh, revenues come from a state grant, E911 training. And I understand this training has already been completed and it's basically a reimbursement. Thank you, sir. Questions of Commissioner Hancock, please. See none. If you're in favor of 509.12, press the yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Okay. 20 yes, 0 no. 20 yes, and 0 no. Resolution 509.14. <clears throat> Resolution appropriating and amending the 2008-9 library budget by $9,874.20 revenues to come from donations. Commissioner Barnwell, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Langston, the second. Library Board of <coughs> Trustees report. Commissioner Barnwell. 640 against. Budget Committee, Commissioner Green. Budget Committee, 440 against. Thank you, sir. Explanation, Commissioner Barnwell. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is just the normal accounting we do when we receive donations. We have to get it under the books so that we can actually spend the money. Thank you, sir. Questions of Commissioner Barnwell? I see none. If you're in favor of 509.14, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Everybody vote, wishes to vote, record a vote, please. Okay. 20 yes, 0 no. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 50916, resolution appropriating and amending the 2008-9 county clerk's budget by $15,000 for additional postage revenues to come from unappropriated county general funds. Commissioner Green. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hancock, the second. Budget committee report, please, Commissioner Green. Uh, budget committee 440 against. Thank you, sir. Explanation, please. Yes, this is... Uh, there's a $2 fee that they pay to have their, that's some of the citizens in renewing their license plates to have their mail, their license mail home to them. This is that fee that's, connect, that's collected as a result of that and it's paid into the general fund and this is just a process of getting it back out of the general fund back into where they can use it to process these fees. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? This is also the $2 you get, uh, Jeff, for doing it online, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Great job. All in favor of 509.16, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 20 yes, 0 no. 20 yes, 0 no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 509.17, resolution appropriating and amending the 2008-9 animal control budget by $24,346. Revenues to come from private donations. Commissioner Green, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Hayes, the second. Budget committee report. Budget committee 440 against. Explanation, please, sir. Are these donations to the uh, animal control shelter to take care of some of the critters out there? It, it's amazing, and Commissioner Hayes, you, I know it was in the report from Mr. Fortner, but uh, it's a wonderful contribution, and people love animals in this county. Uh, this need was identified, and a person stepped up and wrote a check. That's correct. That was in 2013, after hearing that there was a need for a piece of equipment all in one day. Very good. Certainly appreciate that. Resolution 509.17, if you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. 
Record a vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Okay. 20 yes. 20 yes, and 0 no. Resolution unanimously adopted, 50918. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2008-09 Parks and Rec budget by $200. Revenues to come from reserve fund. Commissioner Green. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Little. Tommy Little, the second. A budget committee report. Uh, budget committee 440 against. Thank you. Explanation, please. Yes, this is money uh, for a uh, scholarship funds established by the Hillsborough community for the uh, citizen athletes. And these are funds drawn from the reserve accounts. Uh, must be authorized for that by this res resolution. Thank you, Commissioner Green. Any questions of Commissioner Green? I see none. If you're in favor of 509.18, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 20 yes. 20 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. 509.19. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2008-09 Veteran Services Budget by $1,372.50. Revenues to come from Memorial Brick Paver Sales. Commissioner Green. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Chalfont, the second. Budget Committee. Budget Committee 440 again. Explanation, Commissioner Green. Yes, these are proceeds uh, re realized from the sale of bricks and pavers for uh, set there in place for memorials for veterans of Williamson County. This is the money is collected from the sale of those pavers and this is money being transferred so we can install by the purchase those pavers and also the installation cost at the thank, park. Thank you sir. These are the a lot of these will be the new bricks that we'll be putting down on Memorial Day uh, for that service. So any questions of Commissioner Green? I see none. If you're in favor of 50919 Press your yes button, oppose your no button. Record a vote, please. Thank you, Mr. Barnwell. We got 20 yes. 20 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2008-09 Rural Debt Service Budget by $147,541.25 and approving the transfer of funds between major categories within the 2008-09 Rural Debt Service Fund. Commissioner Green. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Budget Committee report. Budget Committee 440 against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Green. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, just reading the description here. Uh, it's when we issued a new debt on the form of bonds and capital notes uh, this fiscal year, the interest payments due were they're due six months later. These were not already included in our budget, so we are amending the budget to uh, offset those those costs of interest. Questions of Commissioner Green. Five oh nine twenty one. If you're in favor, press your yes button. I push your no button. Court to vote, please, Miss Anderson. Okay. Twenty yes. Twenty yes. And zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution five oh nine twenty two. Resolution transferring the use of funds up to $300,000 within the 2008-09 capital projects budget to be utilized for the purchase of vehicles. Commissioner Green. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Budget committee report. Budget committee 440 against. Explanation, Commissioner Green. Well, 19 cent, well, see, in 19, it was 2007, we appropriated $300,000 to build a uh, multi purpose barn at the Ag Park. Um, before that got completed, uh, somebody, a the donation was received from the Mary Lizzie Maynard estate. And that money is there. We're used to construct a outdoor arena on the spot that was proposed for the multi purpose barn. So we have $300,000 sitting out there. The Sheriff's Department needs six vehicles. And guess what? It costs three hundred thousand dollars. So we're going to utilize the monies from the Ag Park uh, multi-purpose barn to purchase uh, six sheriff's and deputy cars. A little transfer, a little creative financing by the mayor. Any, any questions on uh, this? I, I would like from the chair of the commission to again c congratulate uh, Mayor Anderson, but also thank Kenny Wallace for his willingness and agreement to work within 
his department to support countywide government, the inoperability of these departments is very critical as we go through the next several months as we're looking at the issues that are here. And, of course, Kenny has opened an opportunity for other departments in the county to step forward and do the same thing because it, it significantly helps us. And uh, from the chair, Mayor Anderson, would you make sure that Mr. Wallace accept and knows our thanks for his willingness to work with us? Uh, Okay, uh, the point here is we're transferring 109,000 of that uh, to the Sheriff's Department for vehicles. The other vehicle purchases are going to County General. So, again, uh, the work and support of Kenny Wallace and the department there, uh, we appreciate that. And that's what it's going to take to get us through this most difficult time that we have. So, uh, our thanks to that department. Other questions? C9 509.22 is up for consideration. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. The 20 yes. Thank you very much. Resolution is uh, unanimously adopted. Resolution 509.4, resolution to adopt three star strategic economic development plan. Commissioner Hayes, please. Move for approval. Second, Commissioner Wilson. The Budget Committee report, Commissioner Green. Budget Committee 4 4 0 against. Explanation, Commissioner Hayes, please. The three star program uh, is a program that uh, we have participated in since its uh, beginning. And much credit and all appreciation needs to go to Diane Giddens, who has, has am administered that as well as uh, getting the necessary information from the other departments. It's an economic tool that helps us plan for the future. But with that tool and with the acceptance, it, it opens the, the doorway for a lot of things that we are capable of doing and getting, such as some grants, some, some uh, uh, low interest rates, some other recognitions, and many things from the state and, and maybe even beyond the state that we otherwise would not be able to qualify for. So it's a very good program. <clears throat> and thank you, Diane. Any questions of uh, Commissioner Hayes on 509-4? Commissioner Hayes, I appreciate that, but uh, I do want to uh, clarify that uh, Economic Development Director Matt Largen and all the, the uh, various cities and the Economic Development Council actually worked on this this year, and Laurie and his staff are doing a great job in, in carrying this forward. I'm not as involved with it as I used to, but thank you. Thank you, Diane. That's duly noted. We appreciate them all. She just built a good base to pick up and go, right? She taught them how to do it. We'll do it. Other questions, comments, 5094, if you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 20 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 5095, resolution to affirm compliance with federal Title VI regulations. Commissioner Hayes, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Tommy Little, the second. Budget Committee report. Budget Committee 440 against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hayes, please. Just simply stated, it just affirms that we uh, are in compliance with the federal Title uh, VI of the regulations. Thank you. Other questions, comments? 5095. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 20 yes. 20 yes, and zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution 5096, resolution authorizing the county mayor to execute a contract between the state of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and Williamson County for a trash collecting grant for fiscal year 2009-10. Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Seven for zero against. Thank you, sir. Budget Committee. Budget Committee four four zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this, this this allows the county mayor to enter into a contractual agreement with the state so that we can receive the, this grant. Uh, there's certain things that 
we're required to do and obligate ourselves to do in order to qualify for it. Thank you, sir. Questions of Commissioner Hancock? <clears throat> 5096 is up for consideration. If you're in favor, press the yes button. Opposed, you no know button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Okay, 20 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. 5096. We just did. 5098. A resolution setting the Williamson County Hotel Motel tax rate for fiscal year 2009 and 10. I recognize Commissioner Hest uh, Reba Greer. Uh, move for approval. Commissioner Hayes, the second. Tax study, Commissioner Greer. Tax study report. Uh, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee. Budget committee, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Greer, please. Uh, this is uh, setting the uh, hotel motel tax rate at uh, 4%, which is what it currently is. This is a requirement that it be done each year, so it's no change. So, uh, mm -hmm. Any questions of Commissioner Greer? Uh, this was sponsored by the members of her tax study committee. Any questions? This is an annual approval. This does, uh, let's see, does this require, if it's unanimous, it'll get to two-thirds, right? It will. <clears throat> 5098 is up for consideration. If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please. 20 yes. 20 yes, zero no. Resolution is unanimously adopted. Resolution number 05099. Resolution authorizing the county mayor to enter into a contractual agreement between the state of Tennessee and Williamson County for pass through federal funding to subsidize emergency management. Commissioner Hancock, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Barnwell, the second. Law Enforcement Public Safety Committee. Seven in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget Committee. Budget Committee, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Hancock, please. Mr. Chairman, this allows the county mayor to enter into an agreement with the state that will enable the county to receive the pass-through money from the federal government for the emergency and disaster grant. Any questions uh, from the chair, uh, Madam Clerk? From the fourth, whereas, says the grant requires Williamson County to provide matching funds. Those matching funds are the emergency director's operating budget. So just let the record reflect that we meet those matching funds with uh, Mike Thompson's operating budget. So if you'll just add that. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. To that whereas, and we'll have that clarified. Any other questions? If you're in favor of 5099, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record the vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Be 20 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution number 50910, a resolution authorizing the county mayor to enter into an agreement with the National Association of Counties to provide a prescription discount card for residents of Williamson County. Commissioner Little, please. Move. Russell Little. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Barnwell, the second. Purchasing an insurance committee report. 440 against. Thank you, sir. Public Health Committee. Uh, no, there's no administration. Public Health Committee, uh, Commissioner Hancock. Thank you. Uh, I believe that was 540 against. The Budget Committee. Budget Committee, 440 against. Okay. Public health was 7-0. Seven. Seven, okay, thank you. Uh, explanation, Commissioner Little, please. I'll give a brief explanation, but I want you to know that uh, hidden in that stack of papers you have at your desk is also a couple of handouts that goes along with this program uh, that further explains this. Uh, the Down and Dirty, this is a no-cost <coughs> program. It is, a, uh, it is an offer because of our association with the National Association of Counties through our county that this program is available to any resident of Williamson County. It is not a insurance card, it is a drug discount program uh, offered uh, through Caremark to any of the pharmacies that participate where they are. Uh, 
no cost, no administration. Uh, it's you pick up a card, <laughs> fill it out. Uh, you can go on their website, and they'll even have a, a spot on there where you can estimate how much your drugs will cost. The <coughs> average discount is 22 percent. Uh, they offer the, the over 59,000 pharmacies nationwide. Uh, it's it's a, a good win program for everybody. The other thing is that if you're on a drug program, particularly Medicare Part D, there are some drugs that are, that are uh, not covered under Medicare Part D or maybe under a personal insurance plan. Uh, if that uh, th those drugs can can be gotten with this discount card at a discount if offered. Any questions of Commissioner Little? I see none. If you're in favor of 509.10, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. 20 yes. Thank you. Resolution unanimously adopted. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Barnwell is the one responsible for bringing this forward. So. Uh, that, that, give, was give credit. <laughs> that was presented at last year's conference in Memphis, and I think Commissioner Barnwell brought that back. So thank you. Resolution number 50913, resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding with Medical Support Command National Disaster Response Incorporated for Disaster Relief Corporation and uh, Support. Commissioner Chalfont, please. Move for approval. Mr. Hancock, the second, law enforcement, public safety report. Commissioner Hancock? Six in favor, zero against. Thank you. Budget committee, Commissioner Green? Budget committee, four, four, zero against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Chalfont, please. It had been, uh, we have been working on a, and I have to say right up front, I am I'm a member of this organization. Uh, we are a 501c3 tax-exempt corporation uh, registered also as a non as a nonprofit corporation in the state of Tennessee we have a group of people that meet regularly regularly being once a month to train and to be able to respond to disasters uh, our most recent response was that was to uh, Murfreesboro uh, over uh, mothers uh, over the Easter weekend uh, we train at Williamson Medical Center. We've we've trained and in various aspects. We 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 have a number of people that have already qualified in the community emergency response team training, and uh, we're not we don't propose to be first responders. But if we're asked to assist, then we respond. Uh, we've also received a memorandum of understanding with the Nashville area disaster uh, disaster relief for uh, the American Red Cross, and it was under those auspices that we uh, responded to Murfreesboro. As I said, it's nonprofit. None of us receive any uh, <coughs> any funds at all. Any questions of Commissioner Chalfont on 509.13? I, I will declare that I also am a member of this dis disaster response team and will declare that uh, as a public record, but I will vote my conscience. All of my hours are volunteer and I give them my spare time and uh, pay my own expenses. So I just wanted that in the record that I am also a member of this organization. 509.13, if you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please. 20 yes. 20 yes, zero no. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution number 509.23, resolution authorizing the county mayor to enter into a cooperative agreement with the National Resources Conservation Service United States Department of Agriculture for debris removal and disposal along certain stream channels. Commissioner Jones, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Wilson, the second. Budget committee. Budget committee 440 <coughs> against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Jones, please. This is where the Department of Agriculture, uh, we have passed 
25 percent of removing the debris from the streams in Williamson County from our tornado in uh, 2008, and the federal government and the Department of Agriculture kicks in the 75 percent. They can start initiating the cleanup of these streams after we enter into agreement with the federal government. And, and these funds, for the record, have already been approved. We, we approved the funds last year. This just wraps up some loose ends to get this underway. Any questions? 509-23. I see none. If you're in favor of 509-23, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Record a vote, please. 20 yes. Resolution is unanimously adopted. Resolution 509-23. Resolution 509-24. Resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into a lease agreement with the Williams County Chamber of the American Red Cross for use of office space. Uh, Commissioner Brockman, please. Move for approval. Second. Who's the second? Commissioner Walton, the second. Property Committee. Property Committee. 540 against. Thank you. Explanation, Commissioner Brockman, please. Yes, this resolution authorizes the county mayor to enter into an agreement with the American Red Cross uh, for another year, an extension of their, their lease. The lease agreement is, an, is attached. If you have any questions, um, and that is the resolution. Thank you very much. Any questions of Commissioner Brockman? I see none. If you're in favor of 509-24, press the yes button. Opposed, you no button. Record a vote, please. 19 yes and one no. 19 yes and one no. Resolution is adopted. Resolution 509-25. Resolution declaring certain property and equipment surplus property and authorizing the sale of said property Commissioner Brockman, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Walton, the second. Municipal Solid Waste Board. Commissioner Hayes, please. 540 again. Thank you. Property Committee. 540 again. Thank you. Budget Committee. Budget Committee 440 again. Thank you. Explanation, <coughs> please, Commissioner Brockman. Yes, this declares property uh, as surplus. Um, and allows for the authorization of its sale. We've got a hydraulic excavator, a CAT loader, and they have so many hours, they cannot be further rehabilitated and they need to be sold to surplus. They broke in real good, good aren't I think they? so. A lot of <clears throat> Any questions, <laughs> Commissioner Brockman, on 509 25? Mr. Bumpus will concur that they are broke in good. Any questions? In favor of 509-25, press the yes button. Opposed, no button. Is that it? Record the vote, please. 20 yes. Thank you. Resolution is unanimously adopted. 20 yes, zero no. Resolution 509-26, resolution authorizing the Williams County Mayor to enter into a tower licensing agreement with Comtech for installation of equipment on a county-owned tower. Who sponsored this? Is that the one I signed? You did. Okay. You did. Uh, second. Good. Thank you, sir. It's been a long day. Second. C Commissioner Tommy Little, the motion. The second was uh, Commissioner Jones. The second. Committee report uh, didn't go to any committee, so this this uh, Commissioner Jones, it's over in yours your area. Explain to us what this is. I'll let Rogers. Okay. I just want to ask him how long they're going. How long they're going to need it is. Let me get the chairman off the hook here. I yeah. asked him to sign it yeah. late Friday afternoon. We have a tower out in the uh, on Pinewood Road out at the landfill. They came to us. Uh, they want to put some more equipment on there, a repeater. And uh, the reason they're wanting to do that is to work with the work that is going on on 840 to communicate to the contractors out there. After the term of this uh, uh, lease between Com, uh, Comtech and 
and the contractor, they will give us the, the equipment that's on the tower out in that neck of the woods free of charge. So that's what you're for asking for us to work through. Any other questions? Whether we need Commission. I'll just make one comment. I hope the equipment in, isn't obsolete by the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, come, okay. <laughs> Commissioner Jones, when, when the mayor asked me to sign this and explain what it was, I told him to make sure that it was the kind of repeater that we really need <laughs> okay. so we can use it. So 509.26, if you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Commissioner Ford hadn't voted. Just, just one second. Okay. 20 yes. He's ready to go. Okay. Resolution unanimously adopted. Resolution number 50927. Resolution declaring certain equipment as surplus property and authorizing the sale of the equipment. Uh, Commissioner Hayes, please. Move for approval. Second. Commissioner Lynch, the second. Commissioner Hayes, explanation, please. Yes, this came to our attention late this afternoon, just upon arrival here, or shortly before. Uh, Mr. Bumpus is here to explain if you need any further explanation. But there's a front end loader at the landfill, which we've determined we don't need anymore. And he had planned to go through the committees next month and put it in a surplus auction. It came to his attention this afternoon that there is a city that's very anxious to purchase a front loader and is in need of one. And they're having a public auction June the 6th. Uh, and it could be in a public auction June the 6th that, and possibly for the, them to buy. We wouldn't have time before our next meeting. So it, this was a method to get it on and get it where we could sell it and possibly help the city who needs one and recoup some of our money back. Any questions of Commissioner Hayes? Little Jewel operated downhill both ways. That's right. In favor of 509.27, press the yes button. Opposed, you no know button. Court of vote, please, Ms. Anderson. Mr. Shaw, this Clyde got to get the red cross or just Bert, no need? Bert, Bert, Bert. Bert. Commissioner Shaw, Thank you. 20 yes. 20 yes and zero no. I certainly want to thank uh, each of you for the work and effort that's been made. There's some very <laughs> difficult decisions made tonight. Uh, I'd like to recognize Mr. Floyd Anderson. He's been out there patient with us all night. Uh, glad to see you out, Mr. Floyd. And, and let me say, too, that it's very important to this body, Sheriff Long, that you have been with us tonight, and also our Sheriff's Deputy, Lynn Sutton, and also Special Deputy Hooper is with us. Uh, thank you guys for being here and what's, what who is that sheriff Brandon Ogles. Brandon Ogles is with us as I see a special deputy and I just want to recognize those gentlemen that are here to make sure that things do go orderly and thank you for your work and effort tonight we'll stand adjourned until uh, our meeting in the month of June have a great evening I'll entertain a motion to adjourn all in favor say aye